Hello everyone. I hope you've had a good week. Our lesson today is in Proverbs chapter 29, uh, beginning with the first verse. I am going to use the focus verses, uh, verse 1 and 15 and 17. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this time to come together. Lord, we thank you for those that are watching. We ask a special blessing on each one. We especially pray for those who cannot uh, gather right now and are um, sick or in need of prayer. Lord, I pray for my niece, Erica. I pray that you'll lay your hands upon her and help her to feel well very soon. And uh, Lord, I just uh, thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the uh, our ability to work and do and and learn. And, and Lord, we just thank you for all that. We ask you forgive us, Lord, for we fail you. And Lord, we just pray that you'll be with us and lead us and guide us always in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you'll help me teach this lesson in a way that's easily understood. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I get started, I wanted to encourage you, if you have not watched the video yet that um, uh, Brother Wayne has uh, posted, uh, please take time to watch it. It's a very good video, and, and it was very... Uh, touching, very inspiring, and very well, uh, I think, pointed to the, the needs of us and the needs of our church. And uh, we never pray enough. And it's talking about the power of prayer. So I'll just give give him, give that video a pointer. Uh, Slug and I watched it and, and really enjoyed it. It was very good. Okay. Our lesson today is about discipline. And let's begin by reading our scripture. Chapter 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without uh, remedy. Okay, let's look at 17. Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Okay, let's do 15 and, and 16. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transact transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. We hear a lot about discipline, and uh, uh, it doesn't always have a good uh, connotation to it. Uh, in my generation, discipline uh, normally had to do with punishment. Uh, at home, we might have gotten a spanking, uh, extra chores, or sitting in a corner uh, thinking about what we had done. Uh, depending on the home that you were raised in, uh, your punishment may have been different. Uh, at school, it might have been um, writing an essay or um, writing a report saying a hundred times, I will not talk in class. Those kind of things were normal back in the time that I was going to school. Uh, discipline in all these instances are, are meant to discourage bad behavior and encourage good behavior. The question is, do we accept discipline and learn from it, or do we become stiff-necked and rebellious? Our first verse tells us that it's dangerous to harden our hearts. Uh, you know, when we rebel against our parents, that's not good, uh, but our parents weren't perfect, and we aren't perfect parents either. We make mistakes. And, uh, but when we rebel against our Heavenly Father, it's a whole different plan because He is perfect. He is just. He is right. He is holy. And uh, He is fair. And uh, His discipline is always meant to reach us, to touch out and reach us and change our behavior. Uh, and it's always done out of love. God loves us so very, very much. And it's hard for us to sometimes think about that, fathom that, understand that, how much he loves us, but he does. And anything that he does is for our good, for our benefit, trying to show us, trying to help us, trying to grow us, trying to stop us from uh, going in a way that's, that's going to be uh, detrimental to us. Uh, but how willingly do we humble ourselves? Um, you know, like I said, he doesn't intend discipline for punishment. Uh, he wants to create in us a humbleness, a willingness to submit to his will. 
because why? He knows that's what's best for us. Most of us know when we've done wrong. Uh, we don't really have to uh, see a flashing sign to know that, w that we're in the wrong, that we've done wrong. Uh, if we are truly uh, sorry and accept our punishment, accept reproof, uh, we can learn from that. And uh, we can learn from our mistakes. We can move forward. Uh, that shows a level of maturity in our personal lives as well as in our Christian lives. Uh, but how about when we don't? How about when we just don't do it? We, we want our way and we're not going to listen. Um, in our lesson today, it talks about being stiff-necked. And it says, when you try to put a bridle on a stubborn mule that that mule will stiffen his neck so that it's hard for you get to get the bridle on. Um, now, I think we just got compared to a mule. I don't know about you, but it seems that way to me. So, uh, you know, and I think the Lord uses those terms because they're accurate. You know, when he calls us sheep, you know, we are like the sheep. You know, we need the shepherd. And uh, when we're stiff-necked, you know, we're like that mule that uh, that wants to rebel and not and not give in and do what he's supposed to do. Uh, have you ever heard anybody say, he's just so mule-headed, she's just so mule-headed, She they won't listen to reason, they won't listen to nothing, you know, they're going to have to find out for themselves. Well, uh, when we become so defiant and so prideful that we want our own way and not God's way and we are determined to have it, you know, God loves us enough that he won't let that happen because he knows where our decisions will lead. He knows where our our wants are going to take us and uh, our choices uh, won't lead to a good place. Uh, anytime it's a selfish choice, anytime it's a choice that just that it's all about us and it's not about the Lord. In Proverbs 16, 25, it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Uh, the future for the rebellious is bleak. We don't want to be rebellious. We want to learn to humble ourselves and uh, recognize that God is our Holy Father. And he, what he has for us is what's best for us. And if we could uh, learn that and accept that and follow that, how much easier our lives would be. It's my personal belief, I will say this, my personal belief that God gives us chance after chance after chance. He loves us. He doesn't want to bring discipline upon us. He's hoping that he doesn't have to do that. And uh, I believe that he does that. He desires our love. He desires our fellowship. But he is not quick to discipline us. He is very patient. He is a long-suffering God. and uh, But I do believe he draws a line. And this is my personal belief. I believe he draws a line. And if you cross that line, then you're, you're, uh, you come under his discipline. And I even think that if it's bad enough, he may take your life. And uh, like I said, that's my personal belief. But uh, we can suffer discipline even to the point of death if we are so rebellious that we will not uh, listen and we will not, uh, you know, accept what God has for us. Uh, God's way is always better than our way. We know that. Our, our lives are happier, uh, so much more fulfilled uh, when we can recognize that the truth and allow God to lead and guide in our lives. Uh, that humble submission to his uh, leadership is always a challenge for us. It always is because we're fighting me, myself, and I all the time. Uh, but it's the right thing. It's the, it's the thing that will bless our lives the most is when we are obedient and humble ourselves to his will. Uh, the lesson briefly, you know, touches on uh, the benefit uh, we experience when leaders, we have leaders who are people of integrity, uh, who are disciplined, and who uh, follow God's uh, plan. In the days of Solomon, rulers or kings had great power and great influence over the people. And the ruler's integrity 
determined if the people suffered or if the people prospered uh, under their leadership. Uh, they benefited from the wisdom of the leaders or they were harmed by the lack of wisdom of the leaders. And I think it's important for us as citizens to uh, be prayerful. Uh, when we vote, uh, we, we need to vote our own conscience, whatever that is, but we need to pray and we ask, need to ask for God's guidance. We need to know what these candidates stand for and uh, um, what they represent because they're representing us and uh, uh, we are gonna be governed by these people. Decisions are gonna be made for us by these people. And so we want people with integrity, uh, people who serve in our local, state, and federal government. We want people of integrity. That is our desire. And uh, we want someone who, who has Christian values and who uh, follows God's leadership in their lives. As the lesson moves on, it moves into parenting, and it talks about the rod and the staff. I want to make something uh, perfectly clear. Uh, there is a difference between discipline and abuse. Uh, good parents discipline and uh, guide their children out of love and wisdom. It uh, helps their child to become a, uh, a good adult, a, uh, pro a, a prospering adult, uh, a respected adult. Uh, an abusive parent inflicts pain uh, on a defenseless child. There is a difference. Um, I think people don't need to use the name of God in in beating their children. Uh, that is wrong. That is not God's design. And uh, an abusive parent is, is a tool of Satan. And uh, I want to make that extremely clear. Uh, discipline and uh, abuse are two different things. Uh, abusive parent, like I said, is under the control of Satan. And uh, there is no love in their actions. Uh, abuse can leave and uh, abuse can leave emotional scars on children for the for the rest of their lives. So it's important that we know we have to correct our children, but it needs to be out of love and it needs to be uh, uh, tempered with love. And uh, uh, whether it's our children or our grandchildren, we want them to be uh, respectful. We want them to be obedient. We want them to uh, grow in their knowledge of the Lord. And uh, we want them to be the kind of people that people don't mind to be around. And uh, when we see people uh, who uh, their children or themselves have become bullies or they have no respect for another person or another person's property, uh, that is lack of discipline. Undisciplined people, children, adults, uh, you know, they are... Um, a disappointment to people. Uh, they break the hearts of parents and grandparents if they're disobedient children. And uh, it can bring shame, you know, on themselves and on others. Uh, we have a responsibility to instruct our children and grandchildren to fear the Lord, uh, to respect Him. Uh, when I say that, um, just as we have to learn about the Lord and His blessings, uh, as well as his discipline. It's part of, you know, him being a good father uh, to us. Um, we need to teach our children about the Lord, how much he loves us, how much he's done for us, uh, about Jesus Christ and his uh, His uh, plan, you know, how he played into the plan of salvation, how he was the plan of salvation, how he died for us. It's important that we share those things, but it's also important that we share being obedient and uh, humbling ourselves and accepting that, that God the Father is uh, the holy God that he is. And, uh, you know, I think when we are successful as parents, then uh, we, can, we can be pleased uh, when our children do well and grow up well. Uh, when I say that, let me say this. There are very good children who grew up in bad homes, and it became their personal choice to follow the Lord and to change their lives. Excuse me. And so it's important for us all to realize, no matter how we've been brought up, 
it is a cho personal choice. And, uh, you know, you can choose the Lord and you can choose his way, uh, no matter what your past is. But sometimes we see people, you know, who won't listen and they continue on that path. And, and most often it ends badly for them. Uh, you know, when we are successful as parents, like I said, we can look upon our children and, and we're blessed by them. And uh, the only way that we can be successful and it says in pro, and I think this gives hope to any parent who is worried about their child, to any parent who has a struggling child. I think we can uh, gain hope from this particular verse. It's Proverbs, the 22nd chapter and the sixth verse. And it says, train them up in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. You know, if you have a wayward child or you have a child who's struggling in life, you know, sometimes maybe we won't live to see them change. But if they have brought up, been brought up with the knowledge of the Lord, we do have that promise that they will not depart from it when they get older. When And that may be when they get uh, spiritually mature. When they get mature in age, we, we never know the answer to those things. But that, that gives us hope. You know, if we've done our best and, uh, you know, we have a child that's struggling, then uh, God's not forgot about that child. And, and we shouldn't forget about them either. We should pray for them, whether it's our child, someone else's child, a brother, a sister, a father, a mother. Uh, we should continue to pray for them. There is always hope. There is power in prayer. Uh, you know, sometimes, like I said, we see our children stray and we see them struggle to find their way and uh, in their relationship with the Lord. But that verse, like I said, gives us hope and uh, our loved ones may struggle, but, uh, but, you know, it gives us hope that they will find their way. Uh, God's word, you know, gives us what we need to be wise in our relationship with him and apply his truth and his wisdom to our lives. Let's not forget to study. Let's not forget to pray. Let's not forget to read our Bibles. Listen to the preaching of the word. Uh, that is how we get to know him. And uh, I didn't talk about self-discipline, but self-discipline is also very important. And it is a good thing. And it, uh, and it is one of the fruits of the spirit. Um, but reproof is also a necessary part of learning. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, I seem to learn things the hard way. And uh, But once I learn the lesson, I try not to forget the lesson and not to repeat it. So I hope that uh, we're all that way. You know, if something hurts you bad enough, then uh, you realize you don't wanna go there again. And uh, But we need to learn to humble ourselves and put our pride aside and to do what is right. Lord, help us all to accept your love and your discipline, knowing you have, have done all for us, knowing that you uh, went to the cross for us and that you always have our best interest at heart. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today and I hope you've got something out of it. We all are in the same boat. We have to learn to be disciplined and uh, unfortunately, we all seem to suffer discipline at some point in our lives. But I do think it's important for us to, um, to remember that God has our best at heart, always. I, I hope you're doing well and hope that those that can gather Sunday will be there Sunday. And uh, I pray for those that are, our numbers are still rising and I am concerned about that. And uh, I hope that uh, you're all praying for our community and praying for those that are sick. So uh, until later, much love.